So I'd like to welcome um, our four new members. The board welcomed new members and elected new officers, Rosa Garcia and Blair Ewing of Silver Spring, Mary Kay Finan of Cumberland, and Renford Fremantle of Beltsville are the new members. First I'll begin with Mr. Blair Ewing. Dunbar Brooks assumes the title of president. Beverly Cooper takes his former role as vice president. In the spirit of the History Channel as we started off this morning, we'll kind of start off about 1977. The board dove right into the high school assessments. First, a history that over 30 years led to the HSAs. The class of 2009 must pass these basic foundational tests in Algebra 1, English 2, Biology, and Government to receive a diploma. And, uh, those standards, by the way, were uh, developed by high school teachers who uh, weren't trying to push the envelope. Many students pass them by ninth or 10th grade. The public does not understand that this is a floor. They think it is expecting these extraordinary, uh, this extraordinary performance when in fact it is a floor. The goal is attainable because there's a lot of fantasy out here, of mythology that says this is too far removed, our kids will never make this. And if they can't make that, we're in trouble as a state and a nation. The pressure comes because the deadline is now in sight. Some opposition prompted legislators this spring to require public hearings. So, five hearings will be held in September in five areas of the state. On the 4th, at Easton High in Talbot County. On September 10th, at Charles Herbert Flowers High in Prince George's. On the 18th, two hearings, one at Thomas Stone High in Charles County, and the other at Fort Hill High in Cumberland, Western Maryland. Finally, the last hearing will be September 19th at Baltimore Polytechnic in Baltimore City. All the hearings will take place in the evening between 6 and 9 p.m. What it's taken is a very hard look at what do we need to do more of, what do we need to do less of, what do we need to start, what do we need to stop doing. <laughs> and that's basically what we've done over a process over the last few years. Dr. Elizabeth Morgan and her staff addressed the HSAs and how her county is helping students. In short, she says, it starts with the curriculum. We focus our curriculum on the state's voluntary state curriculum and we use that as our guiding document. It's important that the teachers have the voluntary state curriculum with them on a daily basis. We give benchmark assessments at the end of each marking period, which is every six weeks. It's critical that the teachers get the data back. And quite frankly, once the assessment's been given, the student scores are scanned in electronically. Within 48 hours, that data is populated in our data management system. Teachers can see how the students did on the class, question by question, item by item. And you can see that our student achievement specialists who work day to day as coaches with our other math teachers help us to inform instruction based on the data. We are finding that students who've been on the math improvement plans really do improve in very specific areas that have been targeted for improvement. We have also included our special education teachers in all of our lesson planning and have used their eyes to look over these lessons and activities and say, for a special education student, would they understand this? We have also what we're calling our classroom-focused improvement plans when we zero down to the individual student needs. And that's what teachers are paying attention to. And the amount of time that they are working together to collaborate to determine the best practices has increased. One of the attitudes we've had is if it works well in Washington County, it'll work well in Washington County. <laughs> so we've spread the good practices. It's a duh factor. My name is Francis Scott Key. Right now it's the 15th of January and you have 1860. Being a British soldier isn't that much fun and I haven't seen my family in years. In day one briefs, Travis Peed and Shane Cress of Elkridge Landing Middle in Howard County entertained the board with their Maryland History Day skit. I just have an opportunity that doesn't come along every day uh, to go back to the legislative work. The board bid goodbye to Budget Director Mary Clapsaddle. My roots with MSDE go back to 1980. And hello to Steve Brooks, elevated to the post. I've basically grown up in this agency and gotten old in this agency. <laughs> <laughs> and this will probably kill me. Yeah. No. <laughs> Five Maryland schools, all holdovers, have again been declared persistently dangerous. All are in Baltimore City. This category means that two and a half percent or more of
of their population has for three years running been suspended for more than 10 days or expelled for serious offenses. Five years and a couple of cases, four years, I believe. Uh, presumably they all offered uh, corrective plans. Why do some schools seem to remain on the list so long? Can I just say some good news? And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm rooting for Calvert Middle School. Uh, I will be honest with you. I, w I was over there, and I was like with the principal. She took us into every classroom. They're doing wonderful things. If we look at the three years, they're getting close to coming off. And I looked at the other five that are there. There is only one that actually went up. Federal law provides students the option to transfer. Uh, what percentage of people historically choose to go to another school when they're persistently dangerous? I don't have a percentage, but I can say the vast majority stay in those schools. New Baltimore Schools CEO Dr. Andres Alonso says even in schools designated as dangerous, people feel an affinity to the neighborhood. He expects transfers to be minimal. Two years ago, 360 students, I believe, chose to transfer. Uh, last year, uh, roughly 160 chose to transfer. And I don't know what the choice will be this year. But my expectation is that it will be a small percentage of, uh, of the students who will have the choice. Some board members expressed frustration with the slow progress of schools on the list. I think we are so busy bailing the boat that we're not plugging the bottom that's leaking. So I get tired of excuse making. We know what we need to do. Let's do it and let's keep the pressure on, on the people responsible for, for educating our children. We're talking about infants and toddlers, and we're talking about children being at home or being um, cared for, coming right out of uh, hospital. In day two briefs, the State Department of Education works on a new birth through three plan with a group called Friends of the Family. The work that has gone into it puts us on the cutting edge. In a nutshell, the partners seek to start community hubs to be sure all children will enter kindergarten ready to learn. And the board recognized Jean Gettier for her tremendous work in getting rid of a lot of paper by overseeing installation of a new electronic case processing system for Maryland disability claims. This has been News from the Board with MSDE-TV.